Guys, we're going to have a great episode today. Before we get into that, I want to thank you guys, the listeners, for all the support that you get. I want to remind you that you can reach out to me on Instagram. If you don't follow, follow it at jscottoutdoors. Uh, feel free to send me a DM. I love uh, corresponding with you guys about your hunts and any questions that you might have. Uh, we're going to have a great episode. I also want to thank uh, the sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com. Cody Nelson, my friend of 20 plus years, he's the glassing guru, the optics authority. He's the optics manager over there at GoHunt.com at the gear shop. Uh, You can reach out directly uh, for info or for sales at 702-847-8747. You can also email him at optics at GoHunt.com. He also uh, gets texts from uh, my listeners at on his cell phone, 602-399-3699. Feel free to send him a text if you're looking for a certain tripod or binocular or spotting scope or rifle scope, anything to do with optics. Uh, give Cody Nelson a call or a text. I want to thank GoHunt.com also and remind you guys that the GoHunt maps, the mobile app, um, mapping apps, are now available on iTunes and Android. Uh, They have real 3D. Um, It's awesome, awesome 3D mapping on these mobile apps. Uh, You can get a free trial, a seven-day free trial, by going to gohunt.com forward slash jscott. You can also check in the show notes. I'll have it linked up. You get a seven-day free trial. That gives you access to everything in the Insider as well as uh, g- let you look at the, the mapping apps uh, both on the desktop and on your phone. Uh, you can also sign up uh, by going to GoHunt.com and just use J. Scott, and that's going to save you $50. Uh, you're actually going to get a GoHunt gift card, $50 GoHunt gift card when you sign up. So go check it out. Also want to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. That's the gear that I wear on all of my hunts. Go to KUIUKUYU.com uh, to order the gear right there that are direct to consumer model. Uh, so that's the only place you can get the gear. As well as Phonescope.com. Use the JScott21 promo code and you're going to get a 10% discount. Uh, guys, let's get right to this episode. And again, thanks for listening. Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today, I've got my friend Clay Bundy of Clay Bundy Outfitters. Clay, how are you doing? Really good. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, I look forward to talking to you. We've got a deadline here coming up uh, on the 14th of June uh, for Arizona deer and for Arizona bighorn sheep, both of which you know a lot about. And I'm excited to kind of pick your brain and see what the current conditions are and, and see what's going on out there. Yeah, thanks for calling me, and I'd love to talk about it. So, For sure. Um, first, let's just start out. Um, I'm sure everyone wants to know about the strip and everything as far as deer, but before we get to that, um, let's just talk a little bit about the sheep. I know you've had a, a great success up there in those Nelson I units and um, gotten some great sheep up there. Uh, overall, in general, how do you see those units um, compared to normal? Are everything pretty much the same, or you think quality's down a little bit, or up, or where, what are you thinking? You know, I think they may be down just a little bit compared to maybe ten years ago, uh, but kind of, kind of what they've been for the last four or five years, pretty yeah. average. Yeah. So you've got um, 13B North. Uh, you've got 13A. Uh, you've got uh, 13A North, uh, you've got the 12B East, um, you've also got that, uh, what is it, 12A, there's there's like three units clumped in there. Um, out of those units, if, if you had to pick one, um, and I know you guide them every year, but is there one that stands out that you prefer to guide and, and you like out of, out of all of those better than others? Well, you forgot one, you forgot 13B South. Okay, and that... Uh, that's uh, a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, it is a tough one, but I like it just because it's tough and you're the only tag in there if you get it drawn. Uh, I really like it. Uh, 13B North has uh, been a great unit over the years, had some big rams. You know, now we have Utah competing, kind of hunting the same rams, so the quality's gone down a little bit. Um, that uh, 13A North, the Cottonwood, you know, we hunted, killed a big ram in there this year and had a lot of fun in there. It's There's quite a few sheep there, and uh, 
I don't know. I'd still probably go 13B North as my my first choice. Do you think, know. Do you, you know, you mentioned Utah and you mentioned both 13A North and 13B North. I believe both are affected by sheep that come in and out of Pine Valley. Um, back many years ago, uh, before, uh, now correct me if I'm wrong too, but it seemed like Utah wasn't putting the pressure on the sheep and it actually allowed for a few of those rams to be pretty good rams that come back and forth. So y you think that they, that has kind of hurt the overall quality, right? Yeah, absolutely. They So Utah hunts them hard and we hunt them hard. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the best uh, units right on the border. And so we both hunt hard and... Uh, you know, if they get over there on the the south side of the gorge, then uh, you know they can they can live over there and get big, and and some of them do, and that's that's where we get a lot of the big ones. So. And in your opinion, I mean, there's there's still a chance, and there's rams around that slip through the cracks in those units because of the low density of sheep, right? I mean, you take all those units across the board, like you found a big deadhead. Um, I mean, there's big sheep there. It just it's just a matter of the right hunter getting the tag and, and you know being able to spend the time and and you know dig one out right and just be in the right place Absol at the right time. Absolutely, and you know those that 13B North goes clear down uh, uh, down to the uh, Jacobs Lake Road, Jacobs Wells Road, and so you know there's a lot of country there that doesn't even really get hunted just yeah. because it's, it's harder and the gorge right there. On the Utah border, is so much easier to hunt. So there's some there's some rams that can get big and come out of Nevada, and you know that deadhead I found think came out of Nevada, and it was a big old you know 175 or six inch ram, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, let's let's dive into the strip and talk some deer. I know everyone's kind of dying to get. Uh, what what clay bundy thinks about the forecast for this year um so how, first before we get into like your forecast how are things looking conditions wise because i know you spend more time on the strip than anybody out there what what does the feed what what are we looking like what are the dirt tanks what are the waters what's everything looking like okay so you know the the dirt tanks there's still a lot of dirt tanks that don't don't have water but the trick tanks, all the fish and game ones, are pretty well full. They're, they had, there was enough. You know, we had late storms last summer uh, that put water in some dirt tanks and filled all the trick tanks up. And, you know, all the deer that we killed last year, and we killed quite a bunch of them, that every one of them were just full of fat. And so the deer went into the winter fat. And... Uh, you know, that's a big deal. And then, then the conditions as far as uh, uh, feed and stuff, you know, uh, one thing my dad always, you know, taught me is like, you know, what what he called ooze blossoms. And I think you guys across the river called them Spanish daggers. <laughs> you know, the, the, the big flowers on them, sure. the big white flowers. Sure. Okay. So... He always said that that only happens on a pretty good year, you know. Well, this year, they were everywhere. When you say this year, you mean this? Uh, this spring. Okay, this spring. Okay. This spring, yeah. And, uh, you know, high and low. You know, you, of course, they always start low and then work high, but there, there was just tons of them. And the cliff rose looks pretty dang good. You know, it's it's blooming. It started low and working its way up. The higher country right now is blooming. And, you know, it just, for as, you know, we didn't get that much moisture this spring. And it, But it's just so shocking how good of conditions things really are. Yeah, the, 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 the spring more, spring, or the, not native grass, the, the cheat, cheat grass and stuff like that. It's dried up and doesn't look that great right now, but the native stuff is still looking good. And we, we've, uh, we're coming into a, the monsoon season, and if, 
if we get it, you know, we're going to, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be a good solid average year is what, what I'm predicting. And a good average year on the strip is a, is a good year. Um, well, yeah, it's hard I mean, you, when you've had all the banner years like 2010, you know, two, 19. 2019. I mean, it, those are just anomalies, but average is, is dang good, right? Well, I'd rather have a tag on an average year on the strip than any place in the world. That's, that's a uh, good know, way to put it right there, for sure. Yeah, and so the other thing I'm thinking is, you know, the last two years have been really off, you know, bad years, drought years. And so there's deer that now that were four years old two years ago, and now they're six, that we don't, that we really, they haven't reach their full potential and so they're on nobody's really radar because they just didn't weren't out there you know and so everybody's everybody's really nervous about age class but i but i'm not i think we're going to have age class just because of the drought years that allowed deer to get age without being big deer that they got killed Okay. Does that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. One thing I want to go back to is to clarify to people, we had what you would call a good monsoon, but a late monsoon last year. Or maybe you wouldn't call it good, but we had pretty good moisture late, correct? Yes. So had... when you say two bad years, what you're saying is that the deer didn't benefit from that moisture that came in their antlers last year. And then obviously 21 was bad. But when you say two bad years, you mean two bad antler years. But yes, actually, two. we had yeah. a good late monsoon, which you're telling me put a lot of feet on the ground. And then all of a sudden, it, even though it was dry, the Spanish daggers in the spring were everywhere, right? The blossoms yep. were everywhere. Yes. And so from a rancher, from someone that works the ground every day and has, you know, your whole life, you're telling me that that the conditions, yes, it's dry, but it's not as bad as maybe people think. Absolutely. So here's another little thing, since you, I thought cows, you know, we, we took our cows to the summer country uh, three weeks ago, and my brother checks on them the most. He, I, I asked him two days ago, I said, what are the cows like? And he says, well, you know, we put them in this, this pasture up on the Hurricane Rim, which is on 13A, and he says, you know what, they're, uh, I don't know how to say this, their uh, crap is loose, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. so, so you know what that means, oh, they're, yeah. getting a lot, they're getting a lot of uh, moisture in their feed, and when, they're, when it's good feed, they, their back end gets pretty sloppy. Right, they're runny. My grandma yeah, used to say they're runny when, when the feed is good. Yeah, yeah. and so that's, for me, that's another good indication. Uh, you know, you know, there's, um, there's places probably on the strip. Well, I know there is. There's a few places that got missed, didn't get as good a fall late storm last year. But for the most point, part, I think, it's, I think we're going to be in for a good solid average year, so... Okay, I want to shift real fast to they dropped the tags on 13A and 13B on the rifle hunt. What do you think over the next handful of years that alone will play? And I know that you, I believe, don't I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I believe you were a proponent of dropping a few of those tags um, just to try and keep that age class up. I'm just curious your thoughts how that's going to play out over time. Well... It's going to play out really well if they'll keep it this way. And you know, and, and people, some people that have been putting in for years, going, "Yeah, no, I may not draw." Well, if you do draw on a on a year where they've got the lower numbers, yeah, they're just going to be that many big, more big deer for you to kill. Right. And so, to me, it's just a no-brainer. You know, especially where you've had two bad years, where I'm sure the fawn crop. Well, I know the fawn crop is not wasn't as good and so <clears throat> you know we we don't we don't have the young deer the two-year-old little bucks you know 
maybe as much. And so, you know, a lot of people saying, well, we need to wait a couple of years before the age caskets back. Well, if you think about it, we got two years of drought. So there's less, less little bucks. It may take this year might be the year to draw. Right. Because, because it may take three, four years before we get back, you know what I'm saying? And so I think if they're, if they'll leave these tags, uh, numbers down for two or three years it'd be awesome but okay another question for you is the archery hunts um without the cameras the archery hunts i believe are not gonna be as successful on and this is just my i could be wrong completely wrong i just don't think they're gonna kill as many big bucks as they normally do and i think they're it's gonna be a harder hunt and i think guys are not going to know the inventory as much so you'll see some of these 170 180 inch bucks get shot that normally wouldn't i'm just curious over time without the cameras and i know i've been adamant that i'm for the cameras even though i don't really have any that i use in arizona i think they're a good tool Um, i wish they wouldn't have banned them but i do see potential for archers maybe not doing quite as well and over time it making it it might make some older age class deer for rifle hunters or for archery hunters the next year yeah i mean so you know the best way to kill a big big deer is set water if he's coming in the daytime with cameras you knew whether he was coming or not so now you 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 can walk up to a trick tanker pond and say oh there's a big old track there you have still no you won't have any idea what that buck is now and i've studied tracks a lot and a big track means a big body but it doesn't mean big antlers right and so um i think i think you're right it's going to be a a harder hunt Uh, but for me as a guide i liked my i like my archers to not sit water i like to spot and stock because then i'm more of a help to them and i feel like i'm doing part more part of the hunt instead of just drop them off at water yeah uh, and so i enjoy the hunt uh and so it's it's i don't think it's going to affect us that much i mean yeah if there was a great deer coming into water uh we'd have somebody there but everybody else would too and so, I don't know. I mean, it's gonna make it is gonna make it harder. I so you, so the archers need to come prepared to make some, you know, come prepared where they can make some shots. You know. Yeah, and and have their expectations kind of in line that that yeah. the, the the inventory, the knowledge of inventory won't be quite as robust as as it has been without cameras. I, yeah. I I just can't help but think that it's the cameras going away over time I think will play into your you and your guides uh, hands because of the amount of time that you spend out there and the amount of time that you've spent out there not just that that you currently spend but that you've spent I feel like cameras have given people that don't know the strip like you do they've kind of given them a little bit of a crutch because they can literally go run three or 400 cameras, spend, you know, however many days getting those set up and then literally leave for 30 or 45 days and come back and check them and pretty much have a good idea of inventory. Let them run another month or so. And I mean, they know 90% of the inventory, whereas Now it's going to take time to glass. It's going to take time to check tracks. It's going to take time to walk tracks out and know certain bucks and kind of know those deer. I think it's going to play into, you know, guide services like yours that are on the strip all the time into your hands. Well, I hope so. (laughs) I mean, that sounds, that sounds good in theory. Uh, (laughs) It's still a big place. It is. It's you know you still you still just got to spend the time and and find them and and you know what the cameras have done is taught a lot of people a lot of stuff you know and so there's a lot of these other outfitters that know quite a bit because of the cameras now and uh, learned it quicker 
uh, which took me a lifetime. Uh, so I'm a little jealous, but hey, you know, let's, <laughs> we'll do, we'll just keep we'll just keep staying there and. Uh, You're and, not going uh, anywhere, are you? Yeah, no, I'm not going anywhere, and I've got great people that help me, and and so we're we're all invested in it. Awesome. Um, you've got a big task in front of you. You've got a raffle hunter. Um, you'll be hunting here over the, you know, in the next, say in the next 30, 60 days, somewhere like that. And, um, then you've got a auction tag hunter. And so you, you guys are kind of guinea pigs in the fact that no more cameras and, um, you've got a task in front of you. Are you excited about it? Are you, what, what are you thinking? Well, I'm, I'm I'm really excited about it, but I'm also very nervous. I know, I you know, I I hunted before, the, or I guided before the cameras, and so I know the amount of work it takes right. to, that you have to put in. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, we again, I just want to plug my guys. I've got really good guys that know the strip, that, that run, have run cameras for me, have hunted with me for years. And, and so with that, I'm hoping that, you know, that we will maybe have a little bit of an edge and, uh, and be able to, uh, first off, get these, uh, big tags done and, and then be able to take care of our archers and our, uh, rifle hunters and, and just keep, uh, being successful. That's my hope. Well, Clay, it's always great talking to you. I'm excited to see um, how you guys do, and I, I know I know you're going to do well, and I know your your knowledge and your hard work and your passion for what you do is going to shine, and um, it's been great talking to you, and um, I hope everybody out there um, is successful and, and has a good draw. I want to give you a chance, Clay, to let people know how, if they want to reach out to you before the draw or after the draw, how they need to get a hold of you, and also link that up in the show notes. Thank you. So you you can either uh, text me at uh, 435-680-2991 or call me at that number, or you could uh, look me up at Clay Bundy uh, Outfitters on uh, Instagram. And uh, If we don't answer, we'll get back to you. We always uh, we always get back when we get back into town. So, well, buddy, um, sounds good. The next uh, it's going to be fun over the next ninety days to see how things shake out. And um, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your knowledge with us. The guys, the listeners, always love hearing you and hearing your reports and and hearing. Uh, your knowledge. So I just appreciate you coming on and God bless and you guys take care. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, putting me on. Thank you. You you bet, buddy. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.